Okay, back to the G-Wagon after um, we fixed the uh, Pervap, the EVAP, the EVAP purge valve, sorry, rented lips. Um, once that was fixed and the rough idle went away, um, about 200 miles, 300 miles later, I got another code, another check engine light came on and it was the EGR, which is likely caused by um, the either the EGR is old and just happened to go at the same time that the purge valve did, or the purge valve had something to do with the EGR. Um, I don't know exactly how that works, but it's possible. Either way, we're gonna find out if my EGR is any good or not. And I know the EGR valve, um, the tube and everything is clean because I cleaned it. I do have a video for cleaning uh, uh, M112 and M113 V6 EGR tubes. I have it, I'll put it the link down here. Um, I did that a couple years ago. Um, and I did do this one because it's just, it's not that tough a job. Oh, I gotta pull the hoses off first. Uh, anyway, we're gonna look at the EGR and uh, EGR valve second. right here. And that's the electrical connector for the EGR valve. And there's a couple of vacuum hoses. One of them goes into the intake manifold. Right, can okay, you see it on my finger? Right there, that hose going into the intake manifold. So that could be plugged. This tube here, this metal tube that goes in the intake manifold, I cleaned this out and cleaned the EGR valve out um, probably six months ago. So I'm doubting that's clogged up again. Um, I'm assuming it's either electrical, either the electrical uh, EGR. So your engine's always providing vacuum and the vacuum goes up into this little electrically operated, like it's like a solenoid where that yellow connector is. And when that connector, uh, there's two wires in there and when it gets voltage, it opens up and allows the vacuum to go to this bellows inside of the EGR valve which sucks up and then allows um, exhaust gas to come up and in and mix with the intake air. And it basically, it, it's, it cools down the combustion charge. So it actually cools your engine a little bit. And um, I think that's basically, I mean, it's cooling the intake charge. Something else um, provides a, a little bit leaner running, I guess. It's not open all the time. It's not open at wide open throttle. Um, it's only open at certain moments like deceleration when you let go of the gas really quick. Um, like if you accelerate hard and then let off the gas, then your EGR valve will generally open. Um, and so one of the things I'm thinking, I'm either thinking it's, it's either the electrical connector on this, because again, I've cleaned the EGR tube and I know the, um, uh, the bellows is working. So I'm thinking either the little vacuum tube that goes into the exhaust man or the intake manifold, either that's plugged up a little bit from the purge valve being stuck. Now, I don't know if that purge valve was stuck open or closed. I'm assuming it was stuck open. So it would have had a rich mixture in there and maybe a little bit more blow by and gases which might have accumulated, I don't know. Or it could just be crap. Um, it, it's the intake manifold. The, there's oil vapors getting in there, all kinds of crap. And then this is sucking through and it's sucking the oil vapor. So it could be stuck in that little metal tube, which is only about two, three millimeters across. So I'm gonna pull that rubber hose. Let's pull the hose now. And what I'm gonna do is try and find something small enough to clean in there. I have to find a toothpick or something to jam in there and see if that's clogged. Um, if it's not, my suspect is the um, electronic part of the EGR valve, which is pretty easy. You can swap that off without removing the whole EGR. And I do have some spares here. Um, I'll bring one out and we'll test it and make sure we can hear it opening and closing. And then we'll swap it. Well, we'll pull the old one off and check it as well. Okay, before ramming anything down in there, I've just taken a uh, piece of motorcycle fuel line and put it over top of that hose there. You can see it down there right here, that clear line. And I'm just gonna simply blow through it. And yeah, it's blowing straight through, so that's not the issue. You can suck if you want, if you wanna taste some fuel vapors. <laughs> but that's not the issue, so I'm assuming it's the, the um, 
electronic uh, solenoid. So let's unbolt that. So there should be a T14 like that on the back, right there. Ugh. That holds it in, and then there's a, oh God, it's an Allen key. Uh, I think it's a six millimeter Allen key, but I'll let you know in two seconds. So it, that's, that's it, that little bolt. And then this one here, and then unplug this, which is done by just simply squeezing the metal. Sorry, it's cold out today and I'm sniffling. See the metal tabs, ooh, where are we? Hello. <laughs> See the metal tabs on both sides of these thingies right here? That metal tab. You push in on that one and the one on the other side and squeeze them in and pull it apart. And you just can't see me do it because my hand's gonna be in the way. And there it is, off. So I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna take off that top bolt and then uh, I'll figure out what size that Allen key is, I can't remember. Okay, so just removing the E12 Torx bit. They're on there at about, uh, what is it, 15 foot pounds maybe? Something like that? They're not very tight. Oh, sorry, compressor. I'll go turn that off while I'm taking this bolt out. Okay, so here's the E12 Torx bolt, which we are going to put blue thread locker on when we put it back in. And the other one is a 5 millimeter, not 6, um, Allen wrench. I found these at a place on sale for like 9 bucks for this set in metric. They're pretty cool because this is a five millimeter um, Allen headed um, key. Push it forward and it's a five millimeter socket. It's pretty neat. Let's move this out of the way so you can see, hopefully. Actually loose enough that I can just I've got a five millimeter socket on there. Well, five millimeter Allen key. Allen headed socket. It's just a little tiny bolt. And then the electrical part should come up. And there should be one more hose going into here, which we'll unplug. <laughs> Let's see if it comes off the other end better. Oh, it did. Okay. Good enough. So there's the electrical connector. And I've got another connector for that in the garage somewhere. And we are going to test it. So back in a second, I'm going to hook up some power uh, to the car battery. And uh, back in a sec. Okay, here I've got the EGR valve I just took off. I labeled that, scratched the number one on it. These are my two spares, so let's move those out of the way for now. Because it's pretty simple to test this thing. You don't need anything special to test this. I have an extra plug-in connector. You can use a fuel injector connector as well. They're the exact same connector if you have one. If not, just apply positive and negative to those two little terminals. So what I want to do is apply suction to this and it shouldn't, it, it should be dead. So I'm gonna suck on it. So that's vacuum and it won't suck through. It won't when I'm, but once I put power to this, it should suck through here. So that's, uh, so I couldn't do it the first time. So now I'm gonna plug it in. It's just hooked up to positive and negative. You can see right there. And I am again going to Suck in a hose, and it'll now go through. Which leaves me stumped. 
Okay, nothing. So this valve seems to be working properly. The only thing I can now do is grab one of these other ones and see if there's any difference in the way that works. So where's my sucky tube? This one. Nothing. Excuse my sniffling, it's freezing out here. So now plug this one in and sucky tube again. Actually, that sounds a heck of a lot more open. Let's go back and do that again. Plug this one in. You know what? This one sounds like it opens a heck of a lot. There's a lot more vacuum flowing through this one than this one. So that one's labeled number two. You can see, oh, it's upside down, but whatever, it's a two. Let's try number three, which has an extra electrical connector on it. So, putting vacuum on it, does not suck through, <laughs> does not taste good either. Unplug this and plug in this one. That one works too, but that one feels restricted as well. So that number two one, Whee! camera, don't fall down. Sorry. Stay. So that number two one, three, one. Well, I'm going to put the number two one, which seemed to have a heck of a lot better flow through it. I'm going to put this one on. That could be the problem. The only other thing is it could be the EGR tube could be plugged. But like I said, I just cleaned that out. It shouldn't even be dirty. I mean, that was cleaned, like I said, six months ago. You know what I'm going to do? Hold on a second. I'm going to unplug this. Oops. I'm going to unplug that hose that goes to the bellows in there in the EGR valve. And put that motorcycle... Uh, fuel line on there again and then suck on it again and it should operate the bellows. I want to make sure that's operating. So back in a second. You can use a vacuum pump if you've got one. I've got one, but I'm not going to use it because most people don't have one. So I'm going to use something cheap and easy that most people have at home. Okay, so back so in a second. Vacuum line. Where did my other end go? Vacuum line. The fuel line hooked up. So you can see the bellows and what you were looking for is inside that little window there, a little slot there we should see the bellows move when I suck on it or apply suction or vacuum oh and stop sniffing Wilson Jesus hmm it is moving but then it's popping back and I don't know if it's because this line is not 100% tight on there No, it's maintaining vacuum. It's it's opening. So, either there's seriously something electrically wrong. Maybe I'm gonna check the wiring on this. Actually, I am going to. I'm going to replace the, I'm going to put number two on here and not plug the electrical connector in. And I'm going to see if uh, I get power going into here at any time, which should be, I should be able to give it some gas and let go in the throttle and it should uh, uh, show power going through there. So I'm going to put uh, number two back on the second one that I tested. I'm going to put that on, put all the hoses back on and uh, back in a sec. Okay, you're not gonna be able to hear me, but I'm gonna put the camera down and then I'm gonna probe the terminal and we'll see if it's got voltage.
Okay, so we have 12 volts there. So the only thing it could have been, if it's not a blocked EGR tube, that's the only thing it could be now, is possibly that uh, old valve was just not opening enough to give enough vacuum to suck on the end. So let's plug this in. Plug it, unplug it, and watch the plunge. Did that plunge remove? Plunger is not moving. It's not moving. I'm going to probe again and see if it's calling for vacuum. Oh! <laughs> Sorry. Almost lost it. Let's see if that's calling for vacuum again. Okay, it's calling for vacuum. We're not getting any vacuum. I'm going to pull off this hose that goes into the intake manifold. And we should get a vacuum leak. I should be able to... Okay, hold on a second. I wasn't thinking. Just because it's calling for vacuum, doesn't mean there's enough vacuum in the engine at idle there might not be enough so let's do an on off throttle and watch the uh that valve pretty really hard to do okay plugged in no, i thought cutting off the airflow might do it Okay, I'm gonna put you guys, let's see if I can zoom you in somewhere. I'm gonna mount you. I need bigger, I need longer arms. The throttle is all the way over here, and uh, yeah, how are we gonna see this? Back in one second, let me figure this out. Okay, I can't get a good spot to, for the camera to stay. I can set it on the engine, but it just shakes, you can't see anything. It is opening the slightest little bit, the valve is opening the tiniest little bit. I'm not sure how much it's supposed to open. I am getting good vacuum, I've got the line on the intake manifold again. You can probably hear it. I'll put it by the speaker. I don't know if you can hear it or not. Trust me, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, I can hear it sucking. See it sticking to my finger. We're all getting vacuum. That little vacuum port there where it goes into the intake manifold. Wow, that's, there we go. Um, that might be plugged a little bit, still a tiny bit, so I'm going to run a little bit of sea foam top end cleaner down there since it's a vacuum port. The sea foam, the top end cleaner. Not the lubricant, don't use the sea foam, uh, <laughs> just like w they have a WD-40 sea foam, uh, I can't remember what it's called, but it's probably the best uh, lubricant there is for uh, stuck bolts and stuff. I'm getting plenty of vacuum. 
it, it like I said, it does open the slightest little bit. Uh, everything seems fine. Everything's working fine. I am getting electrical signal to the, uh, the solenoid valve. We know that works because we tested it up there. We put it on and when we had power to it, we had 12 volts of power to it, it opened up and allowed suction through. And when the 12 volts were taken away, it didn't allow suction through. So we are getting suction. Um, so the valve's working. The uh, I know the... Um, Hmm. Yeah, I'm just gonna I'm gonna reset the code after I do this. I think everything's fine. Uh, I'm just gonna have to reset the code, and we'll see what happens. I'm gonna run a little bit more sea foam through here, and then reset the code. It's running absolutely perfectly, even though the air cleaner's not on, so it should run a little bit rough with the air cleaner off because it's getting it doesn't know how to mix that amount of air with the fuel. But uh, I'm, like I said, I'm gonna run a bit more through there and uh, put everything back together, and we'll go for a quick drive. Well, I may have found my issue, which would just be a vacuum leak right here at the breather hose for the uh, driver's side valve cover. That's a little loose, and there's a bit of a crack I found in it. Can you see the crack? Since I don't have another one, I'm going to put a hose clamp around that and we'll see if that doesn't take care of it. Anyway, I'm going to put that on, then I'll reset the code and we'll go for a drive. See if we can get it to trip again. Well, I may have found my issue, which would just be a vacuum leak right here at the breather hose for the uh, driver's side valve cover. That's a little loose. And there's a bit of a crack I found in it. Can you see the crack? So since I don't have another one, I'm gonna put a hose clamp around that and we'll see if that doesn't take care of it. Anyway, I'm gonna put that on, then I'll reset the code and we'll go for a drive. See if we can get it to uh, triple it. Clamp. So the clamp is uh, on now and uh, Again, go for a test drive. A little bit of a rattle you hear is a chunk of catalyst in my catalytic converter, the rear one uh, that likes to rock around once in a while and make a hell of a noise, but it's no big deal. Okay, so the engine's at operating temperature. I should be able to. Uh, I've driven about 15 miles probably about 20 kilometers um, so I should be able to if I hammer it and then let go I wanted to get most of that sea foam out before I uh, you know it could have been lingering in the intake manifold uh, I didn't want to be thr giving it high throttle if there was sea foam sitting in there and I have it suck into the engine all at once so I'm gonna go down here turn around at the corner and uh, Give it some throttle and after a high throttle high speed uh, high throttle and then let off we should be able to see whether or not uh, it should trip that's generally when an EGR will trip if it's toast in a lift throttle application And it usually will not trip when the engine's cold. Usually when the engine, the engine has to be hot because the EGR's valve, uh, EGR valve's job is mostly to cool down the intake air temperature. Am I gonna hit? Nope. We'll get past these people up here before I hammer it. I don't want to scare them. Speaking of scared, is anybody out there scared of this COVID-19 thing or nothing to worry about? What do you think? Hopefully we'll all be okay. But uh, if we get locked down, you know what? If you get locked down at your house, you got uh, two weeks to, your car should come out 
like perfect at the end of two weeks. You should be able to do every single detailing job ever on it. So, you now glass half full, glass half empty, right? Okay, so let's hammer it and see what happens. That was accelerating and then lift throttle. Nothing. Fingers are crossed. It was that. Uh, well, it could have been a combination of things. Could have been that uh, that valve uh, valve cover breather. So. Okay, I think we've solved this. Hopefully, for now, we're all good. So, thank you very much for watching and. Uh, you know, if you like this stuff, subscribe, leave a comment, um, yell at me, scream at me, <laughs> throw me a beer if you can. At least a uh, comment beer is good. If this helps in any way, hopefully that's what I make them for, to help you guys out if anyone needs any help. Thank you very much for watching.